I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners. Now today I'm going to do a reviewing guide on a certain product that I just bought recently on attaching uh, two inch filters to your DSLR camera. However, if you're an owner of uh, this particular telescope and uh, for most of us we might have come across this problem before but I just wanted to highlight something that probably if you are an owner of this telescope or, or something similar you may have noticed that the actual eyepiece holder is, um, has a different thread and attachment now if you're an owner of a DSLR you may find that to attach a camera onto the telescope is really quite easy to do Again, we have a good DSLR camera, uh, 1100D and basically you take off the cap, off the lens cap and usually you can fit a, a T-ring like this which you can connect over to the camera Okay, so you connect the T-ring on there and you can attach uh, a nose piece which is a inch and a quarter nose piece Okay, and it goes onto like a T2 thread and then you just connect it directly onto the telescope like so you now have a DSLR fitted to your telescope however when you start getting more involved in DSLR imaging you probably find that this nose piece here will restrict the actual sensor and if you take a closer look at this image As you can see on that image there, the main problem is you get a vignette effect which basically you get the light sort of area where it, the, the sensor is, is actually it's focused on the image and you just get this perfect light circle all the way around the image you can actually eliminate the process by taking flat frames if you refer to that to the other video on how to take a flat frame you can do that and do that process and eliminate this vignette effect however the other problem is that if you start using DSLR and you're using it for long exposure photography you may want to fit filters now certain filters will help to either combat light pollution or you can have filters that like in enhance uh, certain gas regions in nebulas and stuff like that and the main problem is with filters is that here I have a CLS filter from Telescope Service. This is a, a filter that I use which enhances all the red detail, the red regions of nebulas, particularly like Horsehead Nebula. You know, I found this a very useful uh, filter. And it just screws on onto the nose piece, like so. Now it's relatively easy to fit, but again, when you've got this restriction, this narrow field, you're going to get this vignette in. So, one way to combat this is if you take this apart, you can adapt for a 2 inch format adapter. What will then enable you to do is now it's increased the diameter of the, um, the actual view of the sensor and this will re reduce uh, this vignette effect dramatically and you probably won't get it at all and it's a normal camera this is not a full frame camera this is more than adequate and you can see you've got a good clear aperture and you're not going to get any vignette in and we have a bigger uh, filter which I can adapt two inch filters all right, and this is the, the two inch CLS filter from Telescope Service. And again, that fits perfectly. But however, there is a problem. This particular filter itself, uh, with this telescope alone. Now, for most telescopes, like the Skywatcher ED80 or the Lund 80mm, usually 
some of those telescopes will have a two inch format focuser and basically this can just slide on there onto the eyepiece holder and lock in place and you don't have that problem okay however certain telescopes like this particular model can prove a bit of a problem and I'll show you why okay so what we're doing now is we're going to take a closer look at the telescope show you the problem and then we're going to find you ways how to do it so here's me coming out 66 millimeter a good little telescope okay and I do like high images it's got really good optics and all that but the problem is with it and it's it's only one thing I don't particularly like is that the actual focuser is not quite a two inch focuser now as you can see here um, this will accept inch and a quarter format but it doesn't accept two inch format now there are ways you can use the telescope so you can attach the DSLR camera and then attach two inch filters and basically this focuser it, it has a scat sort of thread at this end which you can take off the inch and a quarter now you take this off and it exposes a thread okay and there is the thread here you, you're gonna have to buy a, a special adapter for your camera to fit and this is the adapter this is a, a scat thread to M48 thread now this basically what that does is you can buy this from telescope service you can get between 10 to 20 euros to buy I'm certain that you can buy them from other good natural retailers out there okay and basically what it does it just screws on at the back like so Right, it's a good fit, good thread, good quality product. And then what that does, you then be able to attach uh, your camera. And basically this will screw on onto the attachment. Okay, however, now this has a good 5mm of thread at this end. But the main problem is though, it's okay that you can attach your normal camera. So if you want to attach your normal camera on there, you can. And to do that is inside this T-ring is there is another internal thread. And you can take this out and screw it onto the telescope. And to do that is, if you look in here, there are very small Allen keys. There's usually about three. And you can take that off and, and expose and another internal thread. And if you could take a look on this old uh, T-piece, you can see what I mean. And then you can take it out and you can get an internal thread that way. However... The problem is though, not all T-rings are the same. So again, it, this still doesn't fit. And it's a bit of a problem. So again, anything like that. I mean, even on a, a, a CCD like this, you can still attach a T2 onto CCDs. And this will fit on normal 80mm refractors, or any other telescopes but with this particular model you just cannot fit anything you cannot fit a 2 inch format and it can be a bit frustrating and you, there are other ways I mean if you attach the, the thread or the nose piece okay now some filters have a built in thread inside Okay, and you have like a, an internal thread. Now, the, some of the borders do actually have the threads from the outside here, and you can actually screw it on that way. However, this one I can't because there is no external thread that for me to screw it onto there. And you can with the borders, you can fit the borders on there, not a problem. But the problem is though. You're going to have a lot of the camera weight body uh, balancing between a very thin thread 
between uh, the adapter and you might actually put a lot of stress and strain on the filter and when you put a lot of stress and strain on the filter you might make the, the filter crack due to the body of the weight of the camera okay so it's not ideal to fit anything on there if you unscrew the filter all right you can still attach the um, the, the camera on there and then sc and screw it on there but you've got no filter now there is an alternative and you can buy uh, clipping filters if you take a closer look at the picture and as you can see on the picture is it basically it's just a filter the corn clip on filters and basically they sit inside a recess inside the actual camera itself however the disadvantage of the clip on filters is they are usually expensive they also can only fit on certain type of models of camera and okay the good thing about the clip on filters is there's nothing going to uh, obstruct the, the camera's uh, spacing so if you're fitting nose pieces and you're fitting filters and all that, it's not going to disrupt with the uh, the air gap, which is needed, in particular for when you're going to fit photo reducers or coma correctors and all that and so forth. You can only get them in certain uh, formats of cameras, and you can only and there's not many around. There's Astromic, uh, Do One, and and certain other brands, but there aren't there aren't that many. And this is the reason why I like the two inch format filters is that they are dual purpose and they can be used for just about virtually everything really. But the problem is though, certain filters don't have an external thread so there's only just one thread on one side which is an internal thread they just don't have an outer thread. Now I've done a lot of research and I've been looking through the internet and I managed to find the, the possible solution to this. And this is this. This is a product from Barda, and this is the protective T-ring for Canon EOS. You can get one, get some for the, the Nikon cameras, but basically this is a special adapter that will enable you to connect uh, two-inch filters, and they, you can connect them either unmounted or mounted. Now the difference between uh, a mounted is this is a mounted filter and this has a thread built in. Unmounted are basically filters that doesn't have this ring or an internal thread, it's just a plain glass. For mounted uh, filters, they're okay. They're okay for the, your, your APC uh, sensors on your cameras. However, if you're going to use uh, full frame DSLR cameras, then you're going to need to have unmounted filters because believe it or not the sensors are so big that you'll get a bit of vignetting across the field so if you're going to use full frame cameras then you're going to need going to invest on unmounted filters the problem with unmounted filters is that you can't find ways to attach them however this device the, which is the Barda Protective T-Ring will enable you to do just that okay now you can buy these for about 40 to about 50 odd pounds uh, for a lot of good astronomy shops I basically got this on Amazon online uh, for a really good price and this is basically just the normal setup you can actually buy this box set in different filters as well so you can able to diff, uh, you can buy uh, the attachment and the filter, but then expect to pay a lot more, around about hundred to about hundred and ten pounds if you will include the filter. But again, if we take a closer look, actually on the wrapper itself, and that's the product number. If you want to order this product, okay. As you see, Barda Protective Canon DSLR T-Ring. You can get one for Nikon cameras as well. I believe that Barda Planetarium do this as well. But that's the, the, the code you're after to order 
if you want to order this online uh, I believe that Tring Astronomy will sell this product at a good price uh, basically this kit comprises a, a nose piece, a 2 inch nose piece uh, it has, the, a, uh, has a special T-ring and it has spacers I uh, may include a filter and an iron key okay so so this is just the normal adaption kit alone so we open the box and as you can see well packaged already so we put the box to one side okay and then that's basically all it is is a modified T-ring now this will fit most Canon EOS cameras in fact all the range and the good thing is it's good quality aluminium construction of ionized uh, powder black powder coating on there which is good really good quality robust and as you can see here is it has a, an internal thread which is a which is a t2 so believe it or not you can actually unscrew the inside to remove the T2 thread so here's the T2 thread inside remove it and then you have an M48 thread inside there and again what that does is if we grab the telescope remove all the bits okay you can attach the T-ring like so so that is problem number one solved you can attach it that way now the good thing about this kit is you can attach 2 inch filters and the good thing about this T-ring is it will not add any of the air gap so in other words you can actually mount a 2 inch filter at the inside and using a, an allen key you have, you, have, you have tiny little allen bolts which you can take off using the, the allen key provided okay and you take them off there's about six screws on here okay so now they're loose and what will happen is if you see this look there's an internal ring here for the M48 ring and you can take that off and there's your ring inside here there is a uh, there is a, like a an o-ring inside now this is particularly useful when you're going to mount your unmounted filters okay so you put your unmounted filters and you can put the the ring back in there and lock in place however if we take the o-ring out because again we want to remove the o-ring you do not need that o-ring only if you're going to mount it with unmounted and we grab ourselves our filter, our CLS filter. Now, you've got to be careful when you screw this filter in place. So ideally, get yourself a, a lens cloth or a builder cleaning cloth, okay, which you can get. And basically what you do is you carefully put the, the T-ring and the filter now the good thing about the border is that the, the actual threads on there are well made and you can just literally just screw them in uh, very nice, nicely done and you just, just screw it in not, not too, don't be too harsh on the filter okay that is the filter in place now again you grab yourself the retaining ring and then fit the uh, the ring inside okay now if the lip is still exposed so in other words if this retaining ring if you if that still sticks out and it's not quite flush then you need to take the ring out and just screw on the filter just a little bit further okay and uh, Usually the threads are really good quality and there's just no requirement and as you can see here this is just just come out of the box and it's fit flush it's fit flush. You then grab your Allen key and then you just carefully and just tighten up
the Allen bolts. They don't need to be too tight. And then, there you go. There is your filter in place. Now, what I would do is before I uh, connect the, the before I connect the the filter uh, the T ring and the filter onto the camera, just go over a quick uh, dusting and just check to see if there's no smear marks on the filter itself. So just do that with a we're using the uh, your cleaning cloth or using your air blower to get any remaining dust. And then once you're happy that it's clean, you can now attach this setup onto the camera, like so. As you can see, using the marker, line up the marker here. Okay. Okay, and then just, just click inside. So that's basically now your camera T-ring and filter in place and then what that's done is that now it acts like a dust shield so it will protect your camera so you're not going to get some dust on there. You can use the, the, the issued uh, nose piece however you need to remove the retaining ring and screw put that in place there okay and then tighten up using the allen keys so you can use the provided nose piece. Now you've got the retaining ring on there we're going to attach it uh, the, this T ring with the filter onto our T adapter, and there you go. That's the T ring in place. And then getting our Equinox 66 millimeter, we can now screw on the, the camera onto the, the telescope itself. So we're then we're going to switch it around like so, and there you go. There is the the camera and the, the filter in place on the Equinox 66 and there you go and the good thing about it being threaded is it's a lot more secure and you're not gonna uh, risk uh, having it to just any to rely on any thumb screws and all that it's quite a good fixture the good thing about this T-ring from Border is now you have the filter in place also you can interchange the filters so you can have other different two inch filters and, and the good thing is you don't need to buy uh, a clip in filter for a specific model. This T adapter will fit on most Canon EOS cameras. So even including full frame or APC sensor frame cameras, it's not a problem. And the good thing is if you've got a photo reducer like this one here, if we take this uh, dust cap off, you can attach it on there. However, as you can see with the field flattener or photo reducer, it has a T2 thread. So you're thinking to yourself, oh no, I'm back to uh, the drawing board. So not to worry, you can, with the, the T ring, you have the T2 adapter here, which is this ring here. So, not a problem, all you do is you take uh, the T-ring out, you know, like so, and what we're going to do is we're going to fit the internal ring itself here yeah, for the T2 adapter. So to do that is, I've noticed uh, with these screws here, if you nip these screws on there, it will clampen uh, the ring slightly so it may be a bit hard to try and screw in the internal thread so just slacken these off a little now the reason why you loosen these slightly is because the lot of pressure if you clamp uh, if you tighten these up and you try and, and thread the internal T2 thread on there you may find it may be a bit difficult to try and turn the ring so what you do is you want to take the internal ring out first carefully not to touch the filter and there you go so there's there's the ring and then what you want to do is you want to screw uh, the retainer ring inside like so now if you notice here there are special eyelets where you can use a special tool to uh, to actually uh, to actually uh, interchange, you know, to actually tighten it up. 
But believe me, you don't need it. You don't really need that. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put the ring inside here, like so. And then we're going to tighten uh, these uh, Allen bolts. They only need to be nipped up. They don't need to be super tight. You don't want to tighten them, over tighten them, so you strip the threads. Just nip them. That's all they require. So there you go. There's your, t there's your internal T2 thread. And then now you can attach your photo reducer or field flattener or one or two. And you just screw that in there in place. Okay? And there you go. And then you can just quickly just connect the T ring. Okay? Alright, there's a T ring in place. And then you can now screw on your photo reducer in there. Okay? Just work the thread in there. Once it's in there, okay, screw it in there like so, and then just tighten all the way up. Now, there it is. You can have there's your photo reducer or field flattener. It's all in place now, and it's all secure. Now, one thing I've noticed is that if your camera is at an angle like that, don't worry. You can just use the the Allen keys. Loosen these off, okay. And once you've loosened them off, there you go. You can then re and retighten the Allen bolts, like so. And then there you go. There you balance. Now it's a lot more secure. It's not going to come off, and your and your camera is is tilted correctly. Now we're going to take we're going to take this off, okay. That's taken off. We're going to take the, the photo reducer off. And now the good thing is though, but on this particular model, I prefer to use the, the Barda one, which is a, a T2 and an M48 internal thread. Okay, so I prefer to uh, prefer to get an eyepiece adapter, uh, camera adapter for this model and this one particular because it's a T2 thread I can screw this directly on there okay no problems all right and then do it that way so again there's so many different different ways you can attach it you can adapt it so you can fit different types of telescopes as well and particularly this model here you know it's it's really good device and if you are an owner of the Necronaut 66 or you have a particular telescope that's not quite a 2 inch format, okay, then this, this item here plays dividends, alright, I seriously recommend it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, only bugbear I have with this product is the nose piece, it's not quite that expected. I was expecting something similar like this which is a T2 with the M48 thread uh, eyepiece adapter I mean that that would have been more like work and I wish this was actually issued as part of the kit so I hope you enjoy watching this uh, product review and uh, thanks again thanks for watching and clear skies to you all